Do you ever get white spots on your fingernails? Mom used to tell me that each white spot I got on my fingernails was a lie I told. Of course, she said this more as a joke, but I believed her. Or, or rather, I believed that she believed for whatever reason. And I didn't want to be seen as a liar, so I was always very careful to tell the truth. And this put me in a hard spot a number of times. So we had a pet parrot named Roger because my family's uncreative. It was explained to me that I'd be responsible for the bird when we got it. It wasn't really true, but I felt it was true. We also had a number of ornate vases. Wait, let me finish. One day, my father was outside mowing the lawn, and I had Jeffrey, who was a close friend in elementary school, over for a play date. He wanted to see Roger fly, and he did need to stretch his wings. He, of course, knocked over one of the many expensive vases. I dived to catch it, but it only fell partially on my hand. It cracked against the hardwood floor. My dad was done, and he came inside, and he asked, Who's responsible for this? And I was grounded for two weeks when I said, I'm responsible. Another time, Jeffrey waved me over to this little alcove on the playground one day, and he had an exuberant expression on his face, evocative of a lottery winner. He showed me this Spider-Man and Venom toy, and he asked me to play with him. I did, but only because he let me be Spider-Man. Venom wasn't my kind of villain. We banged the action figures against one another in the ways that kids do, and I hurt my hand a few times. When the duty aids blew the whistle, Jeffrey hid the toys in this little indentation against the window to the basement where grass was overgrown. I had no idea why, it was just how Jeffrey behaved. The next day, a boy in class who I hated, who was a bully on his worst days and annoying at his best, said his Spider-Man toys were missing and the teacher asked the class if we knew anything about it. I didn't want to get white marks, so I said Jeffrey and I were playing with them, and I explained where they were. I got in trouble for that for some reason, and what's worse is Jeffrey ignored me for weeks after that. I remember after those events, my parents got into a big fight. I couldn't understand why, I just understood the yelling. I remember the hate and the vitriol. I remember my dad asking if Nate, my mom's friend, was in the master bedroom with mommy. I answered honestly, not knowing it was a question I could have been conflicted about. And I remember my mom smacking my face so hard that I hit the ground and injured my wrists. And then after that, my dad pushed my mother to the floor. My dad picked me up and took me outside into the Chevy truck and drove off. And neither of us had our seat belt buckled, and my mother was yelling at the top of her lungs. We got to a local pizza place, Stardust Pizza. We parked in the parking lot. My father hugged me harder than I had ever been hugged. And that was the last pizza I ate with him until I was 19. I was forced to go back with my mother when my parents divorced, and... Because of those marks on my fingernails, I think my mother convinced herself that she wasn't in the bedroom with Nate. I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I still blamed myself for the longest time. And if you're wondering, those marks aren't caused by calcium deficiencies, and they're certainly not caused by lies. They're caused by hand injuries. <laughs>